looks like, no matter how we feel, no matter if I have a voice or not, God, I'm going to give you praise. Amen. Lord God, I thank you for your protection over us this week, these past couple of weeks. I ask that you would continue to protect us, God, that you would continue to protect this nation and your people. And in the meantime, God, we will give you worship. In the meantime, we will sing of your goodness. In the meantime, we will give you praise. Amen. <clears throat> Just because there are things happening here doesn't mean that he is not bigger than that. He's bigger than the things that are happening here. And we have to, it, it's hard for us to grasp. It's, it's hard before we start the next song. It's hard for us to grasp these things when it's going on around us whatever is going on around us. It's hard for us to realize, wait a minute, God is with you. God is with us. In the meantime, even in our, in our fear, sometimes we can feel shaken. Let us sing of his goodness. Let us, let us sing of his greatness. He's bigger than this. He's bigger than this. And he's watching over us. He's watching over his people. He's watching over this nation. He's watching over those that even don't feel it, that even don't believe it. He's watching. What we don't see, he sees. He's in control. Amen. So this next song is a new song for us. It's called The Goodness of God. <clears throat> and we got the words up here. I want you to sing along with us because I really want that to be our declaration this morning singing about his goodness his faithfulness amen
Psalm 145 says, I will extol you, my God, O King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works. Men shall speak of the might of your awesome acts, and I will declare your greatness. They shall utter the memory of your great goodness and shall sing of your righteousness. Lord, this is exactly what we want to do. We want to sing of your righteousness we want to praise, we want to lift up your name, not just now, not just here in this one hour, not only today because it's Shabbat and we're used to, to come together and, and worship you, Lord, every day we want to look at your goodness, we want to remember your goodness, we want to praise you for your goodness. Every day throughout the week, every day throughout the year, in every season, whether they're rockets or not. Amen. Lord, it doesn't mean that everything is easy, happy, yeah. but Lord, you're good. Your plan, your, your purposes are perfect and make sense. Yes. Lord, we want to focus on you, not just on our earthly and worldly uh, goodness, Lord, we, we rejoice in the goodness of you, in the goodness of God. Because this is all that matters, this is all that counts. Yes. Lord, help us to, to, to really focus on that, to, to, to trust in your goodness. And as the psalm says here, from generation to generation. Lord, let us be an example for, for the next generation to come. Let us be also a, an example for, for, for old and young. Let us be an example to the people around us that we focus on you, that we keep our eyes fixed on you, no matter what the circumstances are. Yeshua's name, amen. Can we sing that chorus? And all my life you have been faithful. Lord, all my life you have been so, so of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after me. Sing that bridge. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. And your goodness is running after. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered. running out to me your goodness is running out it's running out 
and see that the Lord is good. Amen. God, I want a taste of that every day. I want a taste of your goodness, God. I want to know you. I want to know your presence. I want to know your goodness. You're good, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you. Can we sing the Shema together? Shema Israel, I Thank you so much. Good morning, Boketov. Thank you so much, Daniela, Kwame, David, Aviv, Hezekiah. Thank you for a wonderful team to make this all work and everybody who helps and jumps around and, and just sees a few things and then gets a brush and cleans it and whatever it is. Thank you for yeah, doing this together. It's a, it's a pleasure to, to have a wonderful team, have you guys here with us. Hey, before we start, before we go into the sermon, I want to make sure you all know this. Our King's Adventure Cruise is coming to Herzliya in August. You may think August, oh, that's so far away. Uh, that's actually happening very soon, and I just want to highlight that as often as I can. Uh, I want to make sure that all the families know it, whether they're here at the congregation or you have friends you want to invite to. King's Adventure, it's, it's a kid's camp uh, from basically 8.30 in the morning. You can even drop them off uh, at 7.30. And then we have um, until 12, I believe. Yes, 12? Yes. 7.30 to 12. Um, noon, just a fun time for three days, August 15, 16, and 17. Fun, day, fun time with your kids, uh, with lots of games, uh, biblical stories. Uh, so sign up. Uh, take, take that flyer with you. There are a whole bunch of flyers uh, outside on the welcome table. And uh, you can register your children uh, online, and you find all the information on the flyer. We have them on all different sizes. So make sure you take them for yourself, but also great opportunity to, to invite uh, friends. To, to this. So uh, be invited to that. Uh, we are finishing up a week of prayer. It's actually nine days of prayer. And uh, it's been a very powerful time, a very blessed time. And um, we have two more, well, we have, yes, two more sessions. Not two more nights, but two more sessions. One is today, right after the service. 
And then the other one is tomorrow. We thought it's, it's kind of sweet to, to do this uh, from holiday to holiday. We started on Shavuot, and uh, tomorrow is, if you know, uh, the day of Pentecost. So covering the, the time in between these uh, days with prayer uh, is, is very special. And the timing is just perfect uh, with all that was happening, um, with, with all the rockets and sirens and all that happening. Uh, just perfect timing to pray together during such a time. And I want to invite you, you can either meet us and pray with us here in person or you join on Zoom, both is possible. And uh, yeah, it's been a very blessed time. So, we've been going through uh, a new book and we started reading 1 Samuel. And you can uh, turn your Bibles to 1 Samuel. And we're going to mainly focus on uh, the, the second chapter. And we're going to have the slides uh, up on the front. And we're going to start reading uh, at verse 11. I just have to make sure I get my slides here right. Okay, perfect. So, First Samuel. Let me move this. First Samuel, chapter 2 is where we're going to start, but we're going to go into chapter 3 as well. So, Lord, we come before you and we thank you so much uh, for your word. Lord, thank you for uh, this very special week of, of prayer. Lord, thank you uh, for, for hearing our prayers. And Lord, today we want to be we, focusing on hearing from you, hearing your word. And Lord, you're active, you're speaking. You, you always have something for us. And Lord, we invite you now to, to speak into our hearts, into our lives. Lord, we want to prepare ourselves for this time and just have a listening ear and a listening heart for your word. In Yeshua's name, amen. All right, so a little bit of background. Uh, we started Samuel 1, chapter 1, where that this wonderful mother or this wonderful woman uh, just has this desire uh, to become pregnant and to have a child. She was uh, without child uh, for a very long time. Her and her husband tried uh, multiple years, and she was just desperate for that. And she came before the Lord. Uh, they went with the whole family, so his Elkanah had a second wife, and they all went together to Shiloh, uh, where the tabernacle was at this point, uh, for one of the feasts. And she just poured out her heart. And God heard her and gave her a son, and she called this son Samuel. Now, her promise was that she would, if, if God would grant her a son, she would completely dedicate him to the Lord and give and completely put him into, nowadays we would maybe call it full-time ministry. Uh, so after a few years when she raised him up and he was a, a little boy and, and ready to, to, be, to live without parents, that was still a very young age, but she wanted to wean him off and she brought him to the Lord and to, to, the, to Shiloh, to, to Eli, who was the high priest at this point. So... We're going to pass around the bucket and let afterwards. Sorry, Hezekiah, I just see it. Thanks. Uh, we're going to do the offering afterwards. So they go to Shiloh and together as a family. And here, this is where we are in chapter 2, verse 11, where it says, Then Elkanah went to his house at Ramah. So they went to Shiloh and then when dropped off little boy, little Samuel, and went back to Ramah where they lived. But the child ministered to the Lord before Eli the priest. And now as we go a little bit through chapter 2, we're going to go jump a little bit from verse to verse. Uh, we, we're going to see this. Uh, it, it's a cool interaction 
uh, between Samuel and the sons of Eli. Because the sons of Eli, they're not following the Lord. They were ministering, they were serving the Lord, but they had no heart for him. They, yeah, we're going to read this. But it's, pay attention, it's cool how it jumps back and forth. And as you, if you want to read that whole chapter uh, again at home, uh, just notice how it goes from Samuel to, uh, to, the, to the sons of Eli. So the, the next verse, in verse 12, says, Now the sons of Eli were corrupt. They did not know the Lord. They served him. They were priests. They were actually serving the people of Israel and, and uh, doing their sacrifices and all that, but they didn't know the Lord. They didn't follow his commandments, and even worse, they cheated. They, they stole from the sacrifices of the Lord. We're not going too much into this, uh, but you can read this in the following verses, how they actually took way too much out and even didn't follow the, the, the principles and, and the commandments of how something should be sacrificed. They also um, slept with prostitutes. So not only sacrifices, uh, but they, they abused their positions, they abused their position, and then slept with prostitutes as well. Therefore, in verse 17, the sin of the young man was very great before the Lord, for men abhorred the offering of the Lord. So the sin was great among these sons. But Samuel, verse 18, ministered before the Lord, even as a child, wearing a linen ephod. Now, verse 22, Now Eli was very old, and he heard everything his sons did to all Israel. In 25, nevertheless, so he spoke to them and said, Hey, guys, what you do is wrong. What you do is, is sinful behavior. But nevertheless, they did not heed the voice of their father because the Lord desired to kill them. We're going to talk about this uh, in a few weeks. Uh, for Father's Day, we're going to look at uh, the role of uh, Eli and, and even Sa Samuel. Uh, his children also didn't really grow up or w walk in the ways of the Lord. So we're going to keep that for later. We talked about uh, mothers and wives. For Mother's Day, we're going to pick that up again, and we're going to talk about some principles here on Father's Day or around Father's Day. But what I want to say is here is he addressed the issue. He didn't discipline them. He didn't take them out of the office. They just didn't hear, didn't listen, continued to do what they've been doing, and God punished them. Verse 26, And the child Samuel grew in stature and in favor both with the Lord and with men. So this is where we're at. This is where, uh, this is the context for today's uh, story in chapter 3. We have this back and forth of Samuel and of Eli. Samuel, just this pure child, serving uh, the Lord, ministering to the Lord. And just having a heart for him. And then we, on the other side, we have the sons who minister to the Lord as well, or maybe do their duty, do their job, maybe let's put it this way, since the Bible distinguishes here a little bit. And maybe that's the point of bringing this up so often. You can do work for God. You can, and what came to my mind is, is Revelation 2, uh, where... Um, where John or the Holy Spirit reveals about the church in Ephesus. And they continue their work. They continue their labor. But what the Bible says is they lost their love for God. We can all do and, and live a life that goes according to the commandments of God. We can do we can run a congregation. We can 
come to the congregation every single day uh, or week or and join the community groups and all that. But we must love God. We must. There is more than just obedience. There is love and there is passion for him. So just that as a side note, and I think this is exactly what, what Samuel has. So let's read the first 10 verses in, in Samuel 3. Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was lying down in his place, and when his eyes had begun to grow so dim that he could not see, and before the lamp of God went out into the tabernacle of the Lord, where the ark of God was. And while Samuel was laying down, that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered. Let's pause here for a moment. Just, that was a long sentence. So, God comes before, comes to, to Samuel. Samuel doesn't, well, we're going to see that later. He doesn't know what's happening. But it says here, the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. Maybe because the sons of Eli were wicked, because there was wickedness in this country, among the people. And then the Lord comes and visits him. And here it gives us a little bit of an idea. It says, before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle. That was very early in the morning. They, they refilled the lamps in the evening. And then early morning was when, when it was supposed to run out and needed to be refilled. So we get a little bit of a time frame here. So early in the morning, they were sleeping and then God speaks to, to Samuel. And he, was an, he answered. So the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here I am. So he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. And he said, I did not call you. Lie down again. And he went and lay down. I don't know how you're feeling when you get... Uh, woken up at, let's say, 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning uh, when you have little kids uh, that might be happening. Sometimes I'm just up, my night is ruined, uh, forget about it. Um, forget about the whole day, actually, it's, it's just miserable. So I can only imagine uh, how, how Samuel uh, must be feeling. It's like, come on, go, go back to bed, you just had a dream. Then the Lord called yet again, Samuel. So Samuel arose and went to Eli, and he said, Here I am, for you called me. And he answered, I did not call you my son. That's actually, he's still nice. I would have some other names than, than daughters, I'll tell you that right now. Lie down again. And he went back. And then, interesting verse Verse 7, now Samuel did not know the Lord yet, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. So he arose and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you did call me. He's still not shying away from going to Eli. And then finally, Eli re realizes in verse, second part of verse 8, Then Eli perceived that the Lord had called the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be, if he calls you, that you must say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and laid down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, 
Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, speak, for your servant hears. So this is the story. This is a very touching story, even. And I, I thought it's speaking of timing, speaking of timing with, with prayer, speaking of timing with uh, the scriptures for today. One might think, oh, you guys planned this with day of Pentecost being so close, Holy Spirit, God speaking to us. Yes, uh, we did plan that a little bit. What can we learn from, from this story here? It's not just a story. Uh, it's a powerful word that God has for us and full of lessons. And today, because tomorrow is day of Pentecost, I want to focus on hearing from God through the Holy Spirit. What can we learn from this? So, number one, first question, if you want to hear from God, are you ready? Are you actually ready to hear from God? And we're going to go through a whole bunch of scriptures today. So you may want to write it down or you want to go back uh, online. But the first scripture I want to start with here, with are you ready, is Isaiah 55, verse 3, where it says, Incline your ear and come to me. Hear, and your soul shall live. If you want to hear from God, incline your ear. Make sure your, your ear, your heart is ready for him to speak. Make sure you are in a position to receive. Make, make sure your, your life is set up in a way that you can receive. The word here in, 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 in Samuel 2, or no, in, in verse 1 or 2, it says, the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. God is constantly speaking. Sometimes it's, it's quieter, sometimes it's louder. But God promises when he speaks, we hear. When he speaks, he speaks to us. And we can understand what he says. My sheep hear my voice, John 10, 27, and I know them and they follow me. Here, this, this chapter talks about people hearing from God or Samuel hearing from God and points out he did not know him yet. He couldn't fully hear. He wasn't accustomed to his voice. He hadn't had that revelation yet. This was the first time that God spoke to him. And he needed to be aware. He needed to be made aware from somebody else, hey, this is God speaking to you. Sometimes it's helpful to have a more experienced person with you who says, hey, this is from the Lord. Especially sometimes we, we're overwhelmed. Maybe we're not used to his voice yet. Maybe we're still in a, in a, a process to, to understand his voice better. But he promises that his sheep Basically, us believers hear his voice. We can understand what he says. There's something that holds God back from speaking to us. And that's maybe one of the reasons if we look back at... So Samuel is, is happened at the round time of the Judges. And the book of Judges points out uh, that... During this time in Israel, people did whatever they want. People did whatever they thought is good. They were not... The book of Judges is an up and down. It's a roller coaster of uh, people following his word and people not following his word. But this happened during this time as well. So 
people did whatever they want. Some people went up to Shiloh, some people didn't. And God doesn't like this atmosphere. Isaiah 59 verse 2 says, But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Other Bible translations would say, They've built up a wall that separates us. And your sins have hidden his face from you. God doesn't like the atmosphere of sin. He hides his face. He turns away. It's a separation be between us and God that we're building up. I want to point out that God is always with us. I want to make sure we all understand this. I'm not saying God is running away from us and leaving us wherever we are. But I do believe that we can create an atmosphere in where God is speaking more to us and where God is speaking less to us. Here a little example in Deuteronomy 31, 18, where God already prophesies to the people of Israel, hey, I'm leading you to this place of where milk and honey flows, but I tell you already that at some point you're following other gods. And I will surely hide my face in that day because of all the evil which they have done. In that day, in that they have turned to other gods. When I have brought them to the land flowing with milk and honey, of which I swore, swore to their fathers, and they have eaten and filled themselves and grown fat, then they will turn to the gods and serve them, and they will provoke me and break my covenant." God led them to the promised land, the land where milk and honey flows. And he knows already they're turning away from God. They're turning already. At some point, they're going to turn away. Now, with the story of Israel, we see that God always came back, and that's kind of proof for what I'm saying. He's not running away and going to forsake us. He's always coming back. He came back to the people of Israel and brought them back and put them back into the covenant. But he's turning away his face, at least for some time, for, to discipline, to, to actually draw people back again, to make them aware of, hey, we are not with God anymore right now. So if you want to hear from God, are you ready? Then, my second point is, God does not speak at your convenience. He may, but he may not. Sometimes it's three o'clock in the morning where, where God wants to say something to you, where God has a word for you. And you're, I would be getting annoyed. It's like, God, could you not have figured out some better timing? Um, Matt and I were, were joking uh, over the last couple uh, weeks uh, with the rockets at 3 o'clock in the morning. We said, hey, we should just send Hamas an email. Our operating hours are from 9 to 5. Um, but they obviously didn't listen to us. Uh, and it was a joke. So uh, anyway, uh, but God doesn't speak at our convenience. He doesn't wait until Daniel is finally ready and he's got his pen organized and ready to hear. And before the Lamb of God went out in the tabernacle, that was when God decided to speak to him. Three, four, five o'clock in the morning. And he went and lay down, and the Lord called him yet again. Three times. Samuel could have said, okay, well, I'm, I'm not getting up again. This is either it's a dream, either it's either I'm, I'm dreaming, having a bad dream, or Eli doesn't know what he's doing. I'm not getting up at the second time. But he, the time wasn't able, to, this bad time wasn't able to stop Samuel from listening. So same with us, be ready. And 
don't just wait until you're ready, but pay attention because God wants your attention. God wants to speak to you. We just need to listen to him. Which is my next point, pay attention. Don't be distracted. Yes, we all live our lives, we all work, have families, we all are busy, but how can we make sure that we're having an ear, that our hearts are set when God is, and, and ready when God is calling? A little story here in Luke 10, 39. So there was Mary and there was Martha, and now already you, many of you know the story. And it says, Yeshua was there visiting, and he was talking and talking to this whole group of people. And it says here, and she had a sister, Martha had a sister, she had, and she was called Mary, who also sat at Yeshua's feet. So they were all at home at Martha and Mary's home. And Martha was, was there in the kitchen, and Mary was at Yeshua's feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore tell her to help me. And Yeshua answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. So Mary, Martha is in the kitchen or wherever she is uh, serving them, making sure everybody has enough to drink or wh whatever, um, is, is feeling good. Hospitality is a big thing uh, here in Israel, here in this region. And she was just, she was doing her duty. She wasn't doing anything wrong. Was, everybody would have probably seconded and understood, hey, Mary, yeah, you sh maybe should help your sister. I, I wonder how many times Martha actually looked back at this moment. Months later, when Yeshua died, months later when Yeshua uh, left and was in heaven with God again, how often did she look back and like, wow, this is embarrassing. I didn't understand. She was distracted. She didn't pay attention. Sometimes we're distracted too. Sometimes we're doing all the right things. Many times we're doing all the right things. We're raising our families, making sure there's food on the table. We're doing it all right, but we're distracted. We're distracted by our duties, by our responsibilities. Let's take this story as, as an example and as a warning. Together with Revelation 2, what I mentioned earlier, we can do everything right. We can do the, the best job here on earth. But if we're missing the important parts, love of God, listening to God, hearing from God, then everything we do is, I don't want to say worthless, uh, but putting us in a wrong direction. Raising our families has a huge priority. But if, we're, if we don't teach our kids to listen to God, to spend time with Him, to make that a priority in our lives, then that is not being a good example. I mentioned the day of Pentecost. And... We read that in, in Acts 2, and uh, it's, it's my, one of my favorite stories to, to explain 
uh, why we we say why we replace some certain words in when we read from the Bible. For example, you you heard me say Yeshua instead of Jesus. Uh, you hear me most of the time saying congregation instead of church or uh, some other terms. Uh, we don't call this um, a baptism pool. We call it a pool for immersion. Or a tank, forget the pool, that was actually the whole joke, I messed it up. It's not a pool, it's our immersion tank. Okay? So, baptism and immersion. Um, one of my favorite stories on examples is Acts 2, uh, because at some point we, we had somebody joining us for our community groups, and we read Acts 2, and uh, the person was Israeli, uh, Jewish, and I gave him a Bible, um, the Tree of Life version, which automatically already replaced all these words, more these, these Christianese words uh, that some people just don't understand or don't know what it means. So we, re we read Acts 2 where it, in many Bibles it would say, on the day of Pentecost. But in this Bible translation it said, on the day of Shavuot. This and this happened. So now... What happened on the day of Shavuot? Well, the disciples, this inner, this core part of core friends of, of Yeshua, they met or continued to meet in Jerusalem and the Holy Spirit fell down on them. This is exactly what the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is what happened on, on Shavuot. Nowadays, this year is a good example. We celebrated Shavuot last week, or was it this week? Well, whenever. Uh, it was a Sunday and Monday. Um, was it last week? This week? Was it this week? Thank you. Sunday and Monday. See, I'm already... When the kids don't go to school, my, my calendar is messed up. So, I celebrated Shavuot uh, early this week, and then the day of Pentecost is happening, being celebrated tomorrow. So, you see how our different calendars went separate ways, which is unfortunate because we are losing this uh, deep connection with, with our roots. But what happened, that's the important part. On Shavuot, what happened here is that God poured out His Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, this is, could be a whole sermon series by itself. One of the things the Holy Spirit does in our lives is that He helps us. He helps us understand who God is, helps us to understand His Word. John 14, verse 26, it says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. God sent us a Helper. God sent you a Helper. To learn, to understand, to hear from God. Yeshua didn't just go back to heaven 2,000 years and say, Hey guys, see you later. In a few thousand years I'm going to be back. Be well. No, he said, something greater is going to happen. Each one of you is going to get something. Just wait. And this one is the Holy Spirit the helper for us. Verse 16, that's the final scripture for today. Verse 13, it says, When he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. God ministers to us. God wants us to get to know Him more. God has a word. God wants to give you clear direction. God wants to give you clear guidance for your life. God has prepared everything for us. We just need to give Him room we just need to give him the attention. We just have to make sure we are ready. We have to 
create this atmosphere. We have to get sin out of our lives by confessing, by repenting, by doing our best not to do it. And in every circumstance, be ready because God may talk to you. And he will. So God, we, we thank you. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. Lord, thank you that you sent this helper to us. Lord, we thank you that, that you that you're with us wherever we go, Lord. Lord, Hannah brought uh, Samuel to, to Shiloh to, to be super close to you, to serve you there. And Lord, through the Holy Spirit, you have brought the temple to us as our bodies are a temple of your Holy Spirit. Lord, you live in us. You brought us close to you. You have drawn us close to you. And Lord, you have this desire not only to focus on obedience and, and whatever we, we may feel and, and hear and whatever that is, but Lord, you have this desire to have an intimate relationship with us. A relationship where, where we get to talk to you, where you hear us, where you promise that you hear us, but also where you promise that you are speaking, that you're talking into our lives. So Lord, make our hearts ready. Continue to make our hearts ready. Prepare our hearts to hear from you because you are talking. Because you never gave up. You never stop. Lord, we thank you and we love you. In Yeshua's name, amen. I want to bless you as we leave. Ja, ihr Adonai Panaf Lecha Vichonecha, Isai Adonai Panaf Lecha, Vesem Lecha Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The, make, the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face to you and give you his peace, his Shalom. Amen. Have a wonderful week. Stay safe. Shavua Tov for all those who are practicing. Shavua is weak. So Shavua Tov, Shabbat Shalom. And stay around for a little bit. <laughs>